Good morning, Faceton. Another beautiful day. Not sure what day this is for you. Maybe Wednesday. Don't know. But um, yeah, we're going to pray and I'm just going to share what God put on my heart to share. Okay. So definitely, Father, I want to thank you for today. Um, thank you for another wonderful day. Lord, this week we've been hearing um, talks about our value. And Lord, I know that someone's out there, they might be struggling with their value or where they're putting their value. But Lord, I pray that throughout this week that they really hear your voice and they begin to question about where their value lies. Does it lie in you or does it lie in something else? I pray that as they hear, their, as they hear your voice, oh God, they begin to realign their hearts with yours. Soften hearts, oh God, and open up ears. In Jesus' name I thank you. Amen. So, um, I woke up this morning and had this incredible um, presentation planned out. I had a whiteboard and everything. Then, as I was listening to me and Micah share, um, I don't know, I kind of felt like maybe God was changing my message a little bit because... He kind of, they were kind of hitting on some things that I know really struck with me when it came to my value. Um, so before I get into all of that, I'm going to start with the Bible. Something that Micah said, which I agree wholeheartedly with, is that the only way we can know our value is if we know it from God, because God is the one that gives us our value. So in Genesis 126, um, God said, let us make man in our own image. And after he created man, he created, um, after he created man, he said that he would give them authority over all the other things he created, like the birds, the fish, um, all the animals. So at that point, when God created man and he said, we're giving him authority over all of this, he gave man value. He, he gave them authority and he gave them value. Um, but even before that, when he said, let us create man in our own image, he's basically saying your value is lined up with me because I'm creating you in my image. Um, and to even take this further, God even gave Adam the authority to name the animals. So right there, you can already see that God really values humans. But as we see in Genesis 3, they began to question their value. In Genesis 3, 1, we see the serpent, the enemy, come in um, and make Eve question her value by saying, did God really say not to eat of this fruit of the tree? He followed up with that saying, if you eat of the fruit of this tree, you can be like God. But as I said earlier, in Genesis 1, 26, God created them to already be like him. So when the enemy said, you can be like God, he was basically saying, right now you're lacking something. And if you do this, you will have exactly what you need. This was a lie that the enemy told me growing up. So I think in prior videos, I mentioned that I am the only boy of three sisters. And oftentimes I would notice that my sisters would get a lot of attention. Um, and I didn't receive that attention. I oftentimes felt like if I was one of them, if I was a girl, maybe I would also get that intention. Um, I didn't act anything out, but the lie I began to believe was that my value as a boy, my value as a man didn't exist. That the only way that I could be valued, the only way that I could be accepted is if I was a female. And the enemy is so crafty that what he would do is, the moment he tells you one lie, he will begin to tell you other lies to confirm that one lie that he told you. So 
I believed this one lie when I was younger. Then growing up, I would hear things like, hey, Shemaya, you know, you might be gay, right? And it struck me hard because they would point out all the reasons why I should be. Because I didn't treat women the way they expected me to treat them. They would say things like I was gay. And it made me really question who I was and it made me question where my value lied. So the more lies I believed, the more I question if I'm valued. So I began to do things so that I could feel valued. I began to drink so that I could be accepted because their acceptance made me feel valued. I began to have sex only because when I told my friends that I had sex, their acceptance made me feel valued. I began to do so many things to make myself feel valued that honestly, I lost the understanding of what being valued actually meant. I had no idea where my value lied. Now, I grew up in a church and I would hear so many times that, you know, you're supposed to find your value in Christ. But the issue that I had was I was being accepted by people. And I didn't feel like Christ was accepting me. So I didn't understand why I needed to find my value in Christ when those people were the ones accepting me. The biggest thing I really want you to pull from this is your value does not lie in the acceptance of others. No matter the praise that you receive, no matter what someone says, your value does not lie in that. Your value lies in the fact that Christ died for you. Your value lies in the fact that God created you in his own image. Because I didn't know my value, I did things. And out of those things, I received life-changing consequences. Things that will affect my life for forever. I really don't want you to lose sight of your value and make decisions because you want to feel valuable. You're young. I'm 28 years old right now. And the consequence that I receive from some of my actions will stay with me for the rest of my life. I urge you, Please find your value in Christ. Realize that you are a son and daughter of God. You don't have to be super talented. You don't have to be the tallest. You don't have to be the prettiest. That does not make up your worth. That does not make up your value. God enjoys it when you wake up in the morning. He celebrates that. This is where your value comes. So my challenge for you, ask yourself, where does my value lie? Are, are you waking up wanting the acceptance of others? Are you doing things that you know you don't actually like doing because you want to feel valuable? I know this is kind of like a heavy topic and honestly, many of you may not even fully understand what I'm talking about. But I know when I was in the sixth grade, that's when I started making decisions about where I thought my value would lie. So you're not too young to ask yourself, where does your value lie? Once again, I'm sorry. I know this 
kind of took a turn and it kind of went heavy. But I ask that you just take time and really ask yourself, where does your value lie? I want to close this out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I know in life we believe many lies and we accept many things as a truth when you aren't the one that are saying them. I know oftentimes we look at our situation and we think because our situation is like this, this must be the truth when it could be a complete lie. And Lord, I know oftentimes that we look at things on social media and we try to change ourselves so that we can feel valuable just like what we're seeing. But Lord, you called us valuable the moment you started creating us in our mother's womb. The moment you, we were born, you said you're valuable. Lord, I know that even sometimes at my age, I still struggle with my value. But Lord, I pray that you begin to really speak to each person listening. That they recognize that their value is not in what they do. It's not in them trying to be someone else. It's in the fact that you call them valuable. Lord, I thank you, and I pray that you really just speak to everyone's heart. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. See you guys.